I've been asked, uh, why, uh, why are you doing this project? And the simple uh, answer is because uh, I can tell stories well, and um, this is a great story to be told. After the team's heartbreaking defeat against Holy Innocence in the third grade Westchester final, going into the fourth grade season, they were optimistic the outcome would be different. In fourth grade, I, I was confident because I knew that it was another year and we were going to get better. A day or two uh, after um, the, our girls had lost the championship in third grade, the boys uh, in their grade had a championship game. Immediately following the game, Eric Mason ran over and uh, hugged his dad. And I remember like, having ambivalent feelings like, wow, that's such a great moment for them. But then also just being really jealous at the same time and like, wow, like, our girls need to do this, you know. Uh, so going into the fourth grade season, um, I was definitely like, we, we got to get it done. Going into the fourth grade season, I was very optimistic. I knew we were going to go very far. We got started early. We had a great uh, preseason. We entered the Halloween tournament, and we were it was at St. Margaret's. Now, St. Margaret's is a team that won, they won it all. They won it all in, uh, in third grade, and uh, they didn't know as much about us, and that was a great, great game. Our girls came out flying. We, uh, we, uh, we, we kicked butt. We played, we played tremendous. The St. Margaret's game was very rough. Sean, I remember in fourth grade, Sean didn't think we would win. was because they, they came at us right away, um, St. Margaret's. And they threw everything at us. They took us on first because they thought that was going to be an easy win. I think Sean just wanted to see how the girls would respond to playing against a team who played rough and who uh, fractured a rule or two. Um, I remember them being like really like nasty, like the way they played and stuff. And like I remember I got hit in the head by one of the girls, and like Kelly's arm got pulled, and they're just like really nasty players. Because that was like my. First wake up call that I need to be rough and that no one's going to be like not rough with me. It's going to be harder out there. The girls not only passed the physical test, but they won the game by the score of 26-17. The St. Margaret's team, we, were, we weren't really expected to beat them. So when we beat them, it was such like a good accomplishment. Always proud, but that was a big win. Like I, like I don't think we realized how big that was that was like one of our first big great wins of uh because they had they had a couple of kids that were considered like the best the best uh fourth graders all around they you know they had in the first game of the saint gregory's tournament olph would face saint matthews for the first of six meetings during the fourth grade season we were, we're always um, excited to play them because they were definitely our biggest competition. But St. Matt's was always like our rivals. We went into um, the St. Gregory's tournament. I remember that. We, uh, we came out on fire. Um, we were playing real well. A 
against St. Matt's, Sean always put me in charge of being against Paige and staying with her the entire game. Over the years, we had like very good games against them. We were always close. Uh, and we beat them pretty good. If I remember, it might have been close to like 15 points or something we won by. So we were killing teams our, in our tournament, IHM, St. Matt's. Get it started, get it started, get it started, get it started. Let's get it started, let's get it started, let's get it started, let's get it started. In here. It would be St. Matt's that we'd meet in the finals at the St. Gregory's tournament. I had a wedding that night, the night before the final, and uh, I got home late, so let's say I uh, I was very tired during the uh, during the game, and I was afraid to I, I was afraid to coach uh, the way uh, I know how. Paige was more determined and beat us single-handedly, and just really wanted it a lot, and she played very well. They wanted us, and they uh, they they played really well, and they uh, they beat us. I think we uh, we were cocky, and uh, your coach was injured. In the game footage, uh, I noticed that uh, Paige would often put her hands on her hips and uh, and rest on defense. And I mentioned it to Sean. Uh, private investigator uh, Todd Furtado, we got to figure out that uh, a couple of things on the camera. For one, whenever she was tired, she would, you know, the hands would be on the back. She'd be leaning back, trying to gather herself, and uh, and she would save herself for offense. And uh, they, uh, I'll give them that. They deserve that one. They didn't, they, we got, we got them most of the time, but they got us that day. And, uh, I'll take that one on the chin as, uh, my fault. It wouldn't take long to avenge the tournament loss to St. Matthews as game one was in Hastings against their rivals. Wait for it. Wait for it. Like Megan Bruno, always. With the I always got excited playing against St. Matt's because whether it was a preseason game or a championship game, it it always was like a good matchup and stuff. Those games against St. Matt's always stay in my mind. They were so intense. Start of the game. Listen, here's what I want from you guys. Don't save any energy right now. The girls didn't save any energy in the second half. In building a two point lead with eight seconds remaining with an inbounds under St. Matt's basket. I tried throwing it over Paige's head to Megan Bruno, but unfortunately it went to the wrong person. It ended up in Paige's hand and she forced overtime, but luckily we ended up winning that game. Ended up uh, going into overtime, but we, uh, we pulled it out. You know, not a pretty game, but a win's a win. Oh, this is no. making the video. Jack, don't ever show you in court. <laughs> in fourth grade, we were blowing a bunch of teams out because from the move to third to fourth grade, we had gotten so much better, but a bunch of the teams just stayed the same and like had the same skills as before. And we would just all come together in a game and just all participate, and we would just kill every team. <laughs> Game three, they would have a chance to avenge their first loss in a place that they hadn't performed well in previously. Faced those girls for six years. Um, fortunately for us, the first time we played them, uh, we were on the victory on the victory side. And then after that, uh, they remembered who beat them, and uh, they took it on us for the next five years. So we had lost to St. Gregory's in our real season game one year, and then the year after we came back and we beat them, showing them that it was just it was just one day and we didn't we beat them, but then we came back and we won and proved to them that they were a team that was beatable for us and yeah. After we win a game, the kids would foster the idea of wearing some of their, maybe their shooting shirt to school the next day. 
So they would not only be a team on the weekends, but they'd be a team walking around Ardsley Concord Road together. Wear like our shooting shirts, our jackets. Some people would bring their backpacks. Some I remember one time someone wore their jersey to school, and it's just something that we wore just to show off, like CIO, and like we we're all. It was something fun that we did. So in fourth grade, we played in the House of Sports League, and in third grade, we we were we were basically winning each um, game when we played each team. So in fourth grade, we wanted to play bigger and better competition. We want to play bigger and better games so we get better ourselves. Uh, and we signed up for the fifth grade league, and I know some parents might have thought it was a little uh, over the top, but. Uh, I think it, uh, it pushed these girls. So we were playing, we were playing some great teams, and we had some, we had some law, we had some losses. It really, like, we really became a team. We really started playing basketball, and you know, we would play, we would play uh, Nick's house of sports team with Mel, and you know, all these girls that I, th I think four of them right now had have Division One scholarships. And, you know, we would go at it and go at it. Sometimes they would beat us up good. Uh, but, you know, sometimes we, like, at least made them, uh, you know, know who we were. I remember once the ball was, like, rolling out of bounds and I started crawling on the floor, like, on my knees to get it. And it's really funny. Because I was always so used to being, like, okay, like, stuffed, stuffed, stuffed. And then we got there and I was, like, oh, hi. And the girl was, like, Put taller than me, and I'm like, all right, I have to actually like put in a lot more work now because this girl is just gonna stuff me. <laughs> so when they were playing in the House of Sports League, um, they were playing some really good teams, and uh, it was getting them battle ready. But like I remember one time, Nicole was playing like the four, and there's this girl who's so much taller than her, and she had like turn her head like this just to see the girl, because me and like Megan Bruno didn't want to guard her. Where we would fine tune these fine-tune them and challenge them enough so that when we did go back to Holy Innocence they weren't as tough and I think that is the key thing was the playing up and exposure to other uh, playing up that really really helped this core kids move forward and become true champions. In fourth grade my daughter Shannon Bruno joined us as an assistant coach and she helped out with uh, House of Sports games. Um, the girls loved her she was like a huge big sister to them all, a mother hen. Um, we would reminisce, my daughter and I would talk about how she just really, really enjoyed each and every one of the kids, um, being around them and coaching them along with her younger sister. One funny memory I have uh, from us when we played in the House of Sports League is when Nikki stiff-armed some really tall girl. I mean, no one was gonna move Nikki. She's a Macri. They would face St. Matt's again in game five and it wouldn't take long to show them how much they'd improved from the preseason. Shoot it, Jack! Yeah! We're all pushing towards, uh, towards a good season. Just when it looked like they would roll over every team, they'd face their biggest challenge in Game 6 up in Mayapak. We were playing up there. I, I forget. I'm going to say it's another Sunday night at 9 o'clock, you know, snowing up in uh, Mayapak. And then uh, that first game was crazy. We were playing uh, back and forth, uh, going back and forth. Yeah, it was, a, it was a battle up there. They were playing us hard defensively. And just it, they just seemed to hang around. And, um, and Megan Casey put us up by uh, two late in that game. Always a tough game playing in Mayapak. And uh, but then they they were able to they were able to tie it up with about uh, 48 seconds left, setting the stage for for what would be a dramatic finish. Come on, come on. We were tied and there was a minute left 
Um, and we were all very nervous because we never lost a game before. Jillian, look Jillian! Get ready Jillian, get ready for that rebound, Jillian! Megan Casey had the ball and Todd was in the corner screaming my name like to get the rebound or something and I turned at him and he said, no, look at the ball! And Christina had the ball. So I got the ball and then I threw it up to Jillian. Christina passed me the ball and I guess I just like turned and shot. Throw it up, Jillian. And just, I didn't know how much time was left, so Christina, I like high five Christina, and I just like walked back, and then the buzzer went off. So yeah. <laughs> My mom came running on the court to like take a job, and I like pushed her away, but I do feel bad for that, cause my mom was really excited for me, and I was so mean. The week after uh, Jillian's buzzer beater against Mayo Pack, we played them um, in OLPH and we crushed them. It's a great memory. I remember when we played at home against Mayo Pack and there was this crazy ref and he was doing all of these like signals and he was so like excited about it. <laughs> the OLPH squad handled St. John's of Mayo Pack quite easily and Jillian Anderson continued to be a Maya Pack crusher. Oh, I get by with a little help. So at the IHM gym, it used to be a pool, and it was all, it was so crazy. They had all these like rules, like the sidelines would be right ag against the wall, and it would be hard to pass it in because you always thought you just step on the line. And then whenever you would ha take like a foul shot when you were fouled, it would always hit the ceiling because the ceiling was so low. When we played IHM in their gym, it was such a weird gym, and we'd always like come in like the stairs were right there and whatever. Like Christina once went up for a layup and she like fell on the stairs or something, and but we always seemed to beat them. But it was just a weird gym. We just wanted to play basketball and we were really good at it and we won basically every game against IHM. Uh, there were some really lopsided victories. Like they were really beating teams pretty handily uh, during that season. But I think the House of Sports League uh, was the catalyst uh, for them beating teams badly. We make sure everybody scored on the team so that no one would feel like left out. And it was always so happy. We'd be like, yes, everybody scored. So it was just really fun when everybody scored and we'd celebrate, I guess. <laughs> The regular season wins kept piling up. Good times. Come on, baby, let the good times roll. Roll all night long. We were leaving the IHM gym, and um, one of the girls on IHM uh, was saying to their mom, Mom, that team was really good, right? And then the mom just didn't sugarcoat it. She said, yeah, you'll never beat that team ever. Yeah, and I remember being behind them and laughing like, oh, <laughs> Yeah, I don't think they ever will. <laughs> the team would be invited to play in a tournament in Hastings. Jillian, what was the name of the team from Boston? That team was just so annoying. Every time we shot it, they would yell like shot at us, and it was just so annoying. <laughs> time that they would see St. Matt's was in the finals of the Hastings tournament. It was good to beat them in their own tournament to avenge the St. Gregory's championship loss. Then the best part of beating St. Matt's is that we beat them in their own tournament. Girls right here, come here, come here, come here. Absolutely awesome. For people not getting any sleep and staying up late, that was awesome. You guys played great, all right? A lot of fun. That's all we do. We play real hard. We have fun, right? Great job. It should not take over my life like this. Oh, let me see. The team attitude was pretty loose 
as they faced Holy Innocence for the first time since the third grade championship game. Each year we just kept getting better. We practiced many hours and like twice a week and we just had really good practices. We worked hard and it seemed like other teams weren't working as hard or just didn't improve like we did each year and we just had that same thing going on every year that we would just really want it and work hard for it and we would achieve it because we wanted it. We were already like 7-0, and 8-0 oh, and, oh. and so we had all this confidence and then when we played them we beat them by so much we were so confident and it just felt good because the year before we lost and now we won with all the same players and it just shows that you can win with a great great confidence and effort. It was nice to put another check mark on avenging a previous loss. The best thing about them was they always played loose. They always played um, like before before games and stuff. They would be doing these dances that I never wanted to learn. They were, you know, doing, you know, just skipping around, just being little girls. But as soon as that ball, um, as soon as that jump ball started, they were they were as competitive as. Uh, as I am, you know, they were, there was, they weren't holding anything back. The starting five girls, uh, from what I remember about that Ann Seton game, really seemed to struggle putting points on the board uh, early. If one kid had a bad day, another kid picked up the slack. And that's what's so fantastic about this group of girls. And Danny really jump-started the offense that day with two baskets. Danny would be any other team's starting point guard. And I know all of OLPH is happy she's on our side. Last night. Yeah, because she's staying at her grandmother's. That's right. That's right. Whatever it takes. Because I love the adrenaline in my veins. I do whatever it takes. I was very lucky and uh, to have be able to coach with my daughter Shannon. Uh, Sean Casey was busy with his uh, business. It's just really nice to have my daughter and both daughters and myself involved in such a great, wonderful uh, CYO program. So if we were winning by a lot and we didn't want to embarrass the team, we would like let them score a little bit or like we wouldn't kill them too much and have good respect and say really good games after that and we would just play fairly, I guess. With first place overall secure, the team was playing for an undefeated regular season. At the last game of the season, uh, it was really funny where Ed Burns uh, sh told Sean to come over and take a look at the third grade banner. Uh, so, you know, he was, uh, Eddie was always a little bit of a wise, wise guy. I had to think, I said, hmm, what could I dig at these girls? What could I dig? I know there's one thing I could dig, but I'm not going to say it. He was kind enough to show me where he uh, has kept his third grade banner hanging up on the wall from uh, beating us. They had a great relationship, Eddie Burns and, uh, and Sean. They, they would bust each other's chops all the time. Uh, Ed Burns walked past half court right in front of Sean while Sean and tried to coach the team and he was saying to the ref, what's, what's this? You know, you know, isn't there a line for him? In front of me, coaching, you know, way past his line and uh, I have to keep escorting him back. Kelly Tierney found a spot on the Pleasantville court and made it her own, burying three shots early in that contest. Sometimes Nicole, she would get in those zones. Uh, I would call it the Nicole zone, where sometimes she would throw something up and it would just go in. And you'd be like, wow, she's, she's in the Nicole zone. And that particular game, uh, she was in the Nicole zone because she was throwing up some crazy shots and they were going in. The previous year we lost in the final and we kind of wanted to prove something that we still have it and being undefeated was a great accomplishment for us in fourth We started uh, separating ourselves a little bit from uh, from them and uh, we beat them again in uh, in the last game of the season. Yeah.
OLPH's first round playoff opponent was the team that gave them the biggest scare of the regular season, St. John's Mayapack. And we started the playoffs, and we were we got uh, we got St. John's Mayapack, but but uh, St. John's Mayapack they gave us the toughest game uh, of the season, and um, our team knew it. And our defense was smothering St. John's, and they couldn't get by us. We just our defense would we would just trap, just go and rebound and score and. They what we crush them with um defense is key. If you don't have a good defense, you're going to get crushed, and we showed that to St. John's in the playoffs. After Nicole Sanfilippo opened the scoring, Coach Sean Casey called for the team to press, and Christina Fatato stole the inbounds play and put them up for nothing. And when we were playing them, they. Our girls were relentless. Their defense was just, they wanted it, and we went after it. They couldn't even, uh, they couldn't even bring the ball up. We were, we were playing, uh, we, were, we were on them, and uh, we played real well and uh, came out with the win. We killed um, Mayapak, St. John Mayapak, in our playoff game, and so that was a really exciting win. We beat St. John's. We got to uh, we got to the finals once again of the CYO uh, Westchester Championship. Okay, so I was playing a game and uh, I got shoved, and then my hand went into a doorknob, and then I fractured it, and then it happened to be like right before the championship game in OPH. Oh no, wait, you gotta be joking! Right before the championship game, you know, one of our top scorers gets hurt. Well, Nicole was. Uh, she broke her wrist and she wasn't playing, so that was going to be a big loss for us. I remember like being really prepared, like the whole team, like coming into the game, and like we were so nervous, and like the parents were nervous because Nicole was hurt. So we were like really determined to win, and we were like we were freaked out because we didn't have Nicole when we found out like you know she wasn't going to be able to play. And it was even more important before every big game that this holy water bottle came out. In its, inside of it is holy water from Lourdes, and each girl would have to bless themselves or whatever with the holy water so that we would win. It was just something that Christina's father used to say to you guys before a lot of the games. And still says it now. <laughs> he says, just came over here to tell you guys, good luck, we're all counting on you. In typical team fashion, the girls were once again loose before the biggest game of the season, the Westchester Putnam Championship Game. It was just like, we just like beat them by like a lot, I guess. Like we just like, it was like an easy win, I guess you could say. And uh, we, uh... We, we came out big. We all, um, team played great. We looked uh, unstoppable. And... I, I don't know. We just kind of got in there and just scored, and it was like, wow. <laughs> we're, we just killed them, basically. Um, we were really nervous to play because we really wanted to win. win. We were winning 10 nothing before Paige even got on the scoreboard. We knew we had an under, undefeated season and we didn't want to lose in the championship and give up all this, what we worked for. So our old, we, everyone was amazing on our team. So we, it was a team effort to win the championship. And even though Nicole was a key scorer, we still did it without her with the team effort. Maybe at the end of third quarter, Telling these guys that hey, you know what I mean. Keep it up. We're gonna, you know, we're gonna have a banner up on uh, on our uh, on our gym wall, and that's all these guys wanted. 
Uh, some, uh, some of them have heard from their parents how the banners have been up there, and these girls, uh, they wanted a banner of their own, and uh, they got it. We beat them. Uh, we beat uh, St. Matt's, and uh, these girls played great. Cool feeling when the buzzer rings here, just like we won. You're simply the best. Better than Everyone flipped out and the whole like gym was like, yeah. So then Megan's dad picked her up and then my dad picked me up and it was like, I don't know. <laughs> it, was, it was funny. I could like see the whole gym and I was like, yeah. <laughs> Meredith just ran in and hugged all of us and then my mom came in and hugged us. I think I might have went a little wild for a little bit. Uh, I remember picking my daughter up, uh, hugging, kissing uh, Rick Bruno, kissing, kissing Todd, kissing anyone, kissing, uh, kissing my wife. Just uh, that was uh, that was a lot of fun. It was uh, these are a lot of great memories, a lot of great fun. Uh, so proud of the girls; they deserve it all. You know, I just remember running to the floor and giving Kelly a big hug and just being so excited. And uh, we finally got to check that box that we got the championship. It was just unbelievable that these kids from third grade to fourth grade had, had reached that extra level and were undefeated and made it through Holy Innocence and dominated St. Matt's. And it was just fantastic for fourth grade season. Every kid and every parent on the team, I think, were on cloud nine. <laughs> And then my dad was just kissing all of us and so happy. How relieved Sean Casey was that we, we won. Um, he said, I didn't want to be the Buffalo Bills, you know, keep getting to the championship game and losing. so great to win the championship all we worked for undefeated having an undefeated season and then winning the championship it's amazing I was so relieved and excited because the last year we didn't we didn't win and all I could think about was getting that big trophy and getting a banner I was so excited to get a banner I was just so happy and like I was so happy that my dad was happy and he was like all proud of us and I was so excited for fifth grade then. It felt really good to win against St. Matt's because a year before we had just lost and we put everything in it that season to just come to the championship and knowing that we could win gave us so much hope for the next year and the years to come on. It was a really great, like we were very happy about that because we were nervous about Nicole breaking her arm but we still beat them and we're really good um, championships. I guess it felt good to like win that because if we lost the last year and we just like wanted it so bad just to make it there and just win. I'll never forget that feeling, winning when they were in fourth grade, the championship. After seeing them so upset the year before and just coming back strong and winning, it was such an amazing feeling. Great, I was so relieved that we won because uh, I was still upset from last year when we lost. I remember uh, going crazy. And oh my gosh, we were so happy. They finally won the championship. What a great, great, great feeling that was. We were so excited. Um, after we went to the diner, and we just partied, and we were very happy that we didn't have the same result as the previous year. And I remember Jen always with her camera, or you, filming, yeah. <laughs> I just thought I should wait for her to go. I remember her to go. You earned it. You earned it. <laughs> you earned it. You earned it. <laughs> Get in my now belly. Now bacon and sausage. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about working out in the red right boots. <laughs> 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 Already hitting their season goal, the girls went back to Ursuline and set their sights 
on the downstate title versus an unknown St. Charles team from Staten Island. That game, I had to say the pledge, and I was really happy about it because, like, so many people were there. I pledge myself upon my honor to be loyal to my God. Huge crowd of people. Um, you had the DJ pumping. You know, everybody was excited. We started off to a pretty sloppy start, and they came up with a really big league. Um, all the players were very good, and we just didn't really know what was going on because we were we were so confident, and now. We're kind of just easing into things. The parents were so loud and very distracting when we would play because they'd have the loud cowbells and all these noises they'd make. And uh, they were a good team. They were big. That number eight was a force to be reckoned with. But uh, she also did a lot of flopping uh, to draw some fouls against our girls. And then we had to go up against St. Charles from Staten Island. And the, the match was played at Ursuline. We missed our early opportunities. To, um, to be dominant, and it just, it, we were trying to play catch up the whole time at Ursuline, and that's a big gym, and, and uh, ultimately, you know, it was, it was a little bittersweet. The girls tried playing, but they just couldn't, couldn't bring it up. There was this really good player from Staten Island, she was just amazing, and we couldn't really stop her. But yeah, we didn't have a, a great start to that game, and, uh, but we kept working hard, and uh, we started to, to score with them. But it was, uh, it was clear that we were going to have to go on a surge uh, in order to, uh, to win that game. And then Irish, um, it was probably meant, it was meant for me, so um, I would pass it out, and then um, someone would set a screen for me, and then I would roll out and just shoot um, a jump shot um, because I had a good corner shot at that time. <laughs> Here it is, here it is. Yeah! yeah! Let's go, let's go, let's go! Get on him, get on him, get on him, get on him! Get over there, get over there! Yeah! Let's go, let's go! We started this like surge and every we started scoring more and more until like it was a three point range. And then suddenly the St. Charles team scores two outside shots and we didn't know how to recover back. But we had all this confidence before. We already won Westchester champs, so I guess that was fine. But we just wanted to think bigger. They worked past us. I just remember that big girl, number eight. She could dribble. She could shoot. You know, uh, I did want to check her birth certificate, but... Um, that was it. I uh, had a tough time. Tough time. Uh, we had a tough time stopping her, and uh, I wish I, I wish I would have uh, maybe coached a little different, cause uh, I was just trying to throw anything at them just to kind of uh, to uh, wear wear them out. But um, they got the best of us. So we ended up losing that game, and I fouled out, which was pretty bad. I was very upset. <laughs> I was really sad that the season was over and I just like wasn't expecting to lose and like it just to end there. I remember we would go to Megan's house and Bailey would pee on me. <laughs> no, she would like, she would get excited from everyone being there. We would play like tag and like manhunt and all that or go in the basement and like play house or something and they would always be like I can bring out you be the mom and I'd be like I don't want to be the mom I'm why do I have to be the mom and they'd be like because you're the biggest one I'd be like no we had a new goal to become downstate champions and then hopefully become state champions because after that loss we really just like wanted to work harder we didn't give up we just kept going I know that better the team would work towards a new goal for the fifth grade season. Now it was to get back to the downstate game and this time advance. We have a, you know, we have a new goal. The season before, 
Our goal was to uh, win Westchester County Championship, and uh, we did that. But uh, we got beat up um, when we went downstate to play against uh, Staten Island. And this year, our goal is to uh, we want Staten Island. They would add a new player to help them get there. Well, I had friends on the team, and she knows on the team. And my dad like told me one day he's gonna sign me up and go to sign ups, and I was like, okay. And I think it would be fun, so I did it. I played a lot of sports with Izzy, like soccer and softball, but I never have played basketball with her, so this was like new, and I was really excited to finally have her on the team. I feel like we needed like a few like we needed like bigs, so it was good that she like joined. I knew she was big and strong. You know, Izzy was a great addition, and she could work down low really well. But she fit in great. Like we were all friends with her already. Like we all knew Izzy because she was probably at every game. It was it was nothing really new, I guess, because we all knew her. It wasn't like someone was just coming, but it was a good addition to the team, and she helped us out a lot. So in fifth grade, I. I broke my arm and it was not fun because I had to sit out for like most, not most of the season, but part of the season and like it was hard to see everyone playing because it just made me want to like get out there and start playing. And again, sorry Nikki about that, that was my fault in uh, in fourth grade I believe or fifth grade. Like Nicole and Nikki just like, like kind of like, you know, like guarding each other or whatever and then I see Nikki just like go down and I was like, whoa. And then I was like, she'll be fine, like, she's Nikki, like, you know, whatever, she's tough. And then I was like, oh, okay, she's crying, so this has to be bad. When Nikki got hurt, it was like a very big loss to our team because she helps us to win. And she's always um, getting the ball away from people and little things that people just don't no notice, and she helps us a lot. It wouldn't take long for Coach Casey to get results from his newest player. It's my first game on OPH. I actually scored two baskets, and it was like the passes were from my cousin, and it really felt like good, and I felt like I was ready for the season to start off good. Girls came. We came back. Um, we came back good. We had a uh, the girls came and uh, ready to play. Uh, so we, you know, uh, Benny Fallon always helped us uh, get into some tournaments and stuff. Yeah, right. Hit cruise control and rub my eyes. The last three days, and the rain was unstoppable. It was always cold, no sunshine. to an Ursuline uh, tournament and uh, we won that so then we went into the St. Gregory's tournament I think we put ourselves up a uh, up a year. Coach Casey wanted the girls to play tough and not be intimidated against the sixth grade competition and that's exactly how they played taking it to the older girls from Resurrection beating them in game one of the St. Gregory's tournament and laughing off the notion that they wouldn't be able to compete in a sixth grade tournament. In game two of the tournament, they came out playing the same aggressive style and were locked in a fantastic battle to the end with IHM. Get it up, get it up, get it up. So when we got our banner, I think it was just such a cool experience to share with everyone in CYO. Like, 
because it's not like you're just sharing it like with your team and like the parents like everyone was there and like you like go up and like it's covered so you don't see it and then like they say like one two three and you like pull it down it's just like a cool feeling it just makes you like proud I guess <laughs> I was so excited to get a banner my mom was like let's put all our names on the banner but um yeah so we had our first banner come down. It was the first of a lot of them. And it was just really exciting, like pulling it down, like from the, with the cover up thing on it. And it was just really exciting. Yeah, going into the, the next season, uh, Sean was telling us that uh, Holy Innocence this year is stacked and they are ready for us. And like, we better be ready because they, they stacked their team and they're gonna just destroy us. Game one was in Pleasantville and Christina wakes up with like a 102 fever. We have to call Sean and, um, and tell him that Christina can't play. And Christina looked at me and says, we're playing Holy Innocence, of course I'm playing. And then Jen was like, yeah, she's not missing this game. And he had us, our whole team, very nervous because we didn't want to lose. That's not our like tr personality as a team. And so once we got in there, we annihilated them, Miss Townsend. <laughs> That's a word. <laughs> and, yeah, so I feel like sometimes that he just says that to make us want to work even harder and, like, wants to scare us a little bit. But after that, we know that we won. So I think that's a good thing. I just remember we crushed them. We, you know, we had to hold back and, uh, and be, you know, uh, keep the score down because, and, those parents who make a lot of noise were for the first time quiet and my villain uh, Eddie Burns uh, looked like he was about to disappear so uh, that was a good one for us thank you girls I do appreciate it and that got us off to uh, a great start of a, of a great year so when the girls played at home or where they played anywhere uh, but especially at home um, they were going to be the winner. No one was going to walk out of OOPH gym or whatever with the W or whatever. It was always going to be us. They were the winners at all times. And it was a great mindset to have. So Not everyone was impressed with the first two wins of the season. We loved playing at OPH and we were so confident there because like we had so many practices and we just like it felt like every shot went in there and we just it was like our home. I always felt comfortable playing at OPH. Our team was very confident when we were there. Feels like home to me. Feels like home. Uh, we put the uh, our girls in the Robert Jacobson, uh, uh, what do you call that? Tri-County. Uh, Tri-County League. And uh, I put our girls up. So we were playing in a sixth grade league, and I was great. It was great. I remember our first game, we played against, playing, we were playing up in Scarsdale, and the match was unbelievable. We, we, we dominated at like 40 to 13. I never forget going over and shaking the coach's hand. And he was just like, your girls are really, really good. The RJS League, um, a lot of the games were like close and like it, you had to play like your hardest till the very end. Like you couldn't give up at any point. And so I feel like playing with those girls, it made us tougher and stronger for when we went into the CYO, like went into our CYO games. Played against a lot of bigger girls than us and Sean would always go crazy during the games. <laughs> I remember one in particular, the Harrison game, and it was so crazy. The girl kept like fake throwing it at our faces, and we all like flinched because we got like scared because it was gonna hit our face, and then she'd just go by us. Throwing the Robert Jacobson, it also helped me get back into the game because we were playing on another league, and we were playing with older girls that were taller than us, bigger than us, stronger than us. And Sean would have us hustle so much, like getting us ready for the season and getting us prepared for what was ahead. And some of these girls looked like they were a foot taller than our girls, but our girls, uh, I mean, I'm always proud, but they were they are warriors. They would go up against anybody. Sean was definitely part of the entertainment for me. Uh, 
just watching him uh, jump up and down and, and scream and yell. And, uh, some, teams, some games I thought that they were going to have to cart him out in an ambulance. <laughs> So the Tri-County games, all I remember was that it was a competitive atmosphere that made me be so competitive today. Um, all the games were so competitive. And every game was just, was just a great fight. And I, I just think we got better and better because we learned how to... Uh, we learned these big girls are bigger and stronger, so we have to be quicker and faster. The atmosphere was so competitive. It just helped with the regular season as well. There were two memorable Tri-County games uh, for me. Uh, one in Harrison where we hung on to a two-point lead. And uh, one in uh, Port Chester where we were down by a point with uh, 27 seconds left and an inbounds play. <laughs> close games in uh, in Tri-County and I think it just kind of taught the girls just how to kind of no problem don't rush it let's take it easy uh, we got this and when we were playing uh, in our with our CYO season I know we had some we had a tough game or two another villain would have to be uh, my buddy up at uh, St. John's Mayor Pack he uh, he brought out the best and the worst uh, we had some we had some great uh, great games and uh, their coach was very, very uh, high energy, to say the least. He's, he's a character. And uh, he, he made me look like, uh, you know, I, uh, I, didn't have, uh, I didn't have many problems. Those close games in Tri-County helped us with our close games in CYO. Yeah! yeah! Uh, Mayapak, St. John's Mayapak, and like, yeah. We always have trouble with like a few teams, but we always beat them because, you know, old page squad. Whenever we went up there to Mayapak, it always seemed like a tough game. We'd only win by like a couple points. <laughs> Good thing about our girls is they always stay cool. They uh, even in t whatever, no matter how crazy the game was got, their coach might have lost their mind, but uh, they were always uh, hanging in there. When I came back to the first game, I was very nervous because I didn't want to hurt it, and I wasn't really in shape because I hadn't done anything to like I didn't dribble a basketball, I didn't run because I was really scared. So when I like got on the court like I was shaking and everything and I had butterflies in my stomach and I remember I hit the ball with the arm and it like felt really weird to like have to actually touch the ball and like have something touch that hand. Locked in another tight battle with St. Joseph's of Bronxville, the team would need another fourth quarter comeback in order to claim victory. I liked playing in those close games like in the fourth quarter when we were tied or it was a really close game. So, um, we do, you know, we came off a tight game off of, uh, with Mayor Pack, and then we got to play him at, uh, at home and everything went our way. Our girls passing, stealing, defense, uh, I had my uh, my good buddy Matt, you know, was uh, coming at me every which way. Early in the game, it was funny. Uh, he was standing up and he was into the game, but as the game went on and, and we kept uh, draining basket and in and after one another, um, 
you could see him uh, sitting quiet on the bench. And by the end of the game, he had his hands on his face, and he'd peek through his hands just to see if we scored another one. How you doing? Uh, this, I'm Coach Matt Levinas from the uh, St. John's uh, CYO team. But if, if I'm going to lose to somebody, I have no problem losing to you guys. One, because he works so hard, and the parents are very good people, and the coaches are great people, and I have a great respect for that team. Whenever we went up there to play them, it was always a tough game. But then at home, it was just like we would blow them out, and it was just like something about playing them there. We just like they never even came close when we played home. Our girls just took over, and uh, I never saw him as uh, as quiet as uh, you know as he was at the end of that game. He didn't know what to do. He was you know he looked like he was just overmatched. At this point, our confidence was sky high for fifth grade, and we were just trucking along, and the kids were all just working. Nobody could shut us down. Fifth grade, we were uh, we were flying along. I um, again, us playing in Tri County, I de definitely uh, definitely uh, helped us because we we became a real dominant uh, team in in the CYO. We uh, we kind of coasted fifth year. At Fordham University, we played at halftime for the girls' game, and it was a lot of fun. Like, I have pictures from that day and all their signatures. It was a really amazing time that day. So, my memories of the Fordham game were that they like split us up into teams, we had to go on separate sides of the benches. And we just played and it was fun. It's not something that you get to do every day where like we went in their locker room, we went like we went on the court and like um, and we got like our ball signed by all the players. So it was so cool. Like Sean like made teams and then like you would just like switch your jersey and it was just so it was just like a cool experience to like play on like a college court and like but it it was fun to like burst your own friends and like see who would win. It's just fun. I remember the Fordham game was a great experience for the parents as well as the kids, you know. Um I remember them taking pictures of mascots, the girls getting autographs, getting basketballs. And after the game, they just gave away a few things like basketballs and stuff. So like everyone got up and got one, but it turns out like I didn't get one because someone else took mine, but I didn't really care. And everyone was trying to get me the ball, but it's fine, you know, I didn't care. <laughs> but I think Shannon was kind enough to give up her basketball and give it to Izzy. And I remember thinking, wow, one day maybe these guys will be playing uh, at a college. And there at halftime, we got to play, um, like, I don't know, a 20 minute game against each other um, on the full court. And then afterwards, we got to see all the foreign players, and I was so happy. Like, they were so nice, and they would all give us hugs, and they were like, you were so good out there. And yeah, so I was like, maybe I could be one of them someday, but I don't know. And was Claire on your team or against you? She was against me, probably. <laughs> I didn't want her to be on my team. <laughs> and who won? Uh, team White or Team Blue? Team Blue. Tie. Tie. It's always a tie. <laughs> it's always a tie for these dumplings. <laughs> that day, we got in their locker room and t talked to the coach and the players, and we had a lot of fun. Do you know anyone who went there? <laughs> it wasn't until game eight before OLPH would play St. Matthews. It was a former teammate who gave them an early gift. Playing from second, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, keeping the core girls together, and they're winning and they're losing, that now they really gelled as a, as a solid team, and they had total court awareness. And with the court awareness, they just knew where each other were at all times for passing. The girls had great chemistry. Um, never seen a team like pass the way that they do. Um, when some of the girls were great at defense, some of the girls were great at shooting foul shots, some of the girls were great at shooting threes, and their passing was phenomenal. Um, from a very young age, they uh, no one was selfish. They learned to pass the ball, and uh, they really, really had great chemistry. They played really well together.
our team so great was that we were all just great friends. We knew each other so well. And just all the skill that each person had just together made a great team. I think all of us like know each other so well and we're all such good friends that like that brought us close together and none of us are like selfish, none of us don't want like one other person to do well. We all want everyone to do well and we all want to win together. And to know that, like that know that we have girls on the team that want to support you too just makes it better and it gives you more hope that like you're gonna win, like you guys can all do it together. All together now, all together now, all together now, all together now. Game 11 was played at OLPH for St. Gregory's without the services of Megan Casey. Tell Megan, we all knew that we had to step up our game. It never followed on one person's shoulders. We all came together and it was a group, group effort. <laughs> So what really made our team great was obviously our bond, but we did work really hard during practice. Like we would go into practice knowing what drills we were gonna do. We ran a lot, but it definitely paid off. Like we all had to really like master our skills, and like we weren't gonna be good without doing nothing. So we really worked hard for it. We We got snowed out uh, for our for our game um, against Holy Innocence um, at Iona. I just thought we would be better. Like we spread it out well, and I, I wanted to play them at Iona, uh, but we couldn't. We couldn't get that. And St. Matt's wouldn't give me. Well, they wouldn't guarantee the big gym. So uh, so then we uh, we played them at, at our gym. We had a playoff game against um, Holy Innocence uh, in our OLPH gym, and it was a crazy atmosphere. Um, the The place was packed with people. These like holy innocent people start coming in, they bring their own balloons, they bring like the whole like CYO to this game. It was so packed, you couldn't even walk in all OPH. It was crazy. And I'm down in Roanoke, Virginia for work, and I'm like, how am I going to get back up? Well, I had to make up a story, and I had to land at the airport at 5 o'clock and go straight to the gym, because I was not missing this for anything. And it was, it was worth, worth leaving for, because the Holy Innocence team came in like they owned the place. They had balloons. Um, they really thought that they were going to win this game. It was Megan Casey who would start the scoring for OLPA. expected a tough game against Holy Innocence at our home gym, but they didn't come close to us. We beat them and... My buddy Ed Burns would do anything for the win. He was trying to intimidate us. He was trying to... He was trying to... He, he, was, he was more than their sixth man on that team. He was trying to, you know... Uh, he, was, he was trying to do whatever he can to uh, steal that win. And he did that once already to me uh, in third grade, and we weren't going to let that happen. Our girls came out. These girls, our girls came out so tough. They, these girls were pushing and screaming, and they have, uh, they got some, um, they got some, they have some tough, uh, tough girls that, uh, um, you know, sometimes could, uh, I guess, need, use a hug or something, but, uh, our girls came and we, 
we we played really well. That was a that was a great win, and I was glad to uh, send my boy uh, Eddie Burns off packing. It was such a big game. I thinking we would be like it would be so close, and like we ended up just like beating them by so much. It was like not worth having all those people there. For them. For them, yeah, not for us. <laughs> it was just a crazy game. The refereeing was uh, terrible. Um, we had their fans in in our building. Uh, it was it was an emotional game, and we we came away victorious in the end. Um, we thought it was going to be a, a tougher game, but we uh, we ended up beating them uh, convincingly. We crushed them, but it was just kind. Of we, they were fouling so much, it wasn't even like a game. They were hurting us, like when a big one out like Nikki would go up, they would just foul and the referees were bad. And I all I remember was like, we were up by so much and like nothing would be the same again as third grade where we lost. I feel like now we were crushing them and we're getting in our rhythm. <laughs> In the Doug Heffernan gym, they'd once again face St. Matt's for the Westchester Putnam final. Again, it's uh, us. It's, it's us against uh, St. Matt's, and uh, again, the game plan is uh, stop Page. Right from the tip off, this game was a battle. Uh, I've never seen uh, St. Matt's play so hard defensively early on in that game, and uh, we weren't uh, we weren't giving Page any room to do her thing. Kelly popped another one in from the sweet spot. I think Nicole threw some crazy bomb from way outside again. We uh, smothered St. Matt's defensively. They couldn't uh, figure out how to get the ball past half court. I'm mistaken. I think we were winning by a good amount, and this is when uh, um, the priest. Uh, oh, took the sign. The priest came over during uh, during one of our timeouts and uh, took a sign down. It was walking through our um, walking through our huddle, and I was trying to tell the girls to uh, pay attention to me. Uh, Eric Mason was able to rescue uh, his dad's sign from the garbage. Yeah, I'm not sure what father was objecting to uh, with that sign. Maybe he couldn't do a reverse dunk? <laughs> Early on, it was the outside shots that were killing them. Then it was our transition game that hit them before our inbound plays got them. So they were uh, running around uh, defensively. Uh, they didn't know uh, what to do. They were confused on how to stop us, and they were leaving a lot of holes in their defense. St. Matt's was looking at our team, and all of a sudden, instead of defending tight under the basket, they came out to challenge us. They came outside the three-point line, and they started playing a wide zone on us. Your guys' team was like a really good team because they always made it to like the championship and we always versed them. They were always like one step, of a, one step ahead of us, so I appreciate playing them because they made me a better basketball player. In the second half, Megan Bruno would deliver the knockout blows. <laughs> little snippet there, that few minutes, that, that 10 minutes, then that, well, not even six minutes during that quarter, or that quarter and a half, Megan was able to dust Paige, and that was just, to me, 
that was that was it. That was like the, the ultimate. That was Nirvana. Comfortable lead. We just held on to the ball, kept passing it around the outside of the key, and we had this confidence level that was unparalleled. Good job, girls! Hey, my girls Good right job, here. good job! Yeah! I was so happy. I ran out and kissed Christina. So after the championship game, Sean was so excited that he, um, he kissed the cashier guy at the front desk, and he also kissed Theodora. So yeah. We uh, yeah, we just played. Uh, we played well. Um, we got through that, and uh, we won it again. We won two our second year in a row of uh, winning uh, Westchester uh, County uh, CYO champions. I uh, again, what do I say? These girls. Uh, these girls are amazing. But uh, as good as they are on the court, that's how good they are off the court. We went to. Guys, I hope you all stay together for a long time. Yeah. Woo! Hold them up high! Hold them high! Yeah! Yeah! yeah. yeah. Be proud of that trophy. Yeah. Little dance, Megan. <laughs> yeah. Let me see, Jillian. Yeah. Let me see, Danny. Hold it up. <laughs> we have many um, memories at Double Days because that's where we usually go out to eat after the games. It's time to party, let's party. Turn your wits yourself and every crazy party. Hey, you, let's party. Every killer party and party. Don't even try. It was an amazing time. We all had so much fun. I guess um, Sean was happy that night or whatever and like we were all excited and Sean we were singing we are the champions. I remember uh, we had a really fun time at Double Days after uh, the victory. Um, you know. We had uh, Sean in his glory uh, very happy. Yeah! yeah! Coach in the middle! Coach in the middle! <laughs> know what was going on. I was like, all right, whatever, just go with it. In the middle. Woo! Yeah, the moms uh, pretty much just chatted at the table while the dads and the, and the kids uh, acted like kids. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> After our fifth grade win, we celebrated at Double Days and we were doing the flashlights and the bullying circle and it was a lot of fun. So we had a circle of our whole team and then there was one like big person, maybe it was like Megan Bruno or something, and they would push her on and she would be like, oh, and like this all over. And then I, I guess I was li more little and I got pushed and I was like all over the place and everybody was pushing me around and it was just not the same as the bigger people, but yeah. Where Rick just got pushed into the middle of the bully circle.
going back to double days and celebrating with the families and the kids all together and it was a, a crazy night. <laughs> We just had a legendary uh, time, um, legendary party. And we just partied all night long. We we were bowling each other apparently and it was just crazy. It was really fun, we all partied. We took our phones and we were shining light and we were singing a song. Um, we also put cups down and we bowled people so see how many cups we, that would fall down. Um, we had like cups, we were like throwing all the napkins and cups and stuff. And, like... and um, it was an MVP of a night, I'll say that. Sean had everyone with the flashlights of their phone going <laughs> swing. It was really funny. And with our flashlights on like this, we would all have them on. And yeah, we just had a really fun time that night. And I also remember rocking out to the song of Take Me to Church. Uh, no, no, no. Now we got it. This is our goal. We're heading into, we're in fifth grade and we're heading off to uh, play uh, Staten Island again. When we were celebrating, though, we still, know, still knew that there was work to be done for the downstate game. Uh, we're going to end up playing the same team uh, that we lost to uh, last year, St. Charles. And, uh, hey, girls, I want you to go outside right now just so you can hear. It's gonna be it, we might as well have been in Rome uh, playing in the, uh, fighting in the Coliseum because these, uh, these fans made uh, the fans of uh, Mayapak and uh, some of the parents of Pleasantville look, uh, look civilized. When I walked in there, I was shocked. Staten Island has a lot of support, so I'd never forget walking into the gym down here in Staten Island. We were all really nervous coming into the game, and there was cheerleaders, and like, the, it was like every bleacher stand was them, and then we just had one little bleacher stand for OOPH, and they looked really big. The whole gym was filled with St. Charles people, and we only had like a little stand of four artsy people, and we were like, yay. They were... 400 fans there, 375 were rooting for them. Despite being outnumbered in the crowd, it was the OLPH fans who get to cheer first. <laughs> OLPH was determined to show St. Charles that they were a different team than a year ago. We jumped out to uh, an early lead, uh, I think surprising them uh, quite a bit. Balls and uh, the girl number eight, who was big last year, is uh, even bigger. And Christina didn't allow her to get comfortable uh, this time around, and also uh, she stayed away from fouls, which, uh, which was key. booing me. I remember getting booed. I was like, oh. And then when I was shooting, I remember they like tried to psych me out. It was so funny. When I came into the game, right off the bat, I was able to make a shot. When number eight made that play, 
at, at the end of the first quarter, we knew that it wasn't going to be that easy and that she was going to start playing and we had to step up and play better. Yeah. <laughs> One thing we remembered from the previous uh, year was they uh, were lights out on the foul line, and uh, they were proving it again this time. They were not missing their foul shots. <laughs> Bye. Um, I just know that they had really tall people, and so um, we needed to box out and stuff. So on the team, I was a big body, and I went in and I was physical, like they wanted me to be. Um, that number eight girl, um, they were uh, really playing physical with her early on, and uh, it really uh, I think started to take a toll on her. Uh, where she started to take some undisciplined uh, fouls and... She started to pile up fouls and she was getting frustrated. What a, what a game that was, um, you know, in a hostile atmos atmosphere. You could see that uh, number eight was, uh, was elevating her game. played our hearts out. Arsley parents, you know, they did a great job. I remember raising my hands and trying to get everybody on the other side to, to scream for Arsley and, and stomp their feet like the pack does at the Arsley High School. It was, it was a crazy game. We went back and forth scoring and scoring. It was like knit knot. Very close. This game was intense. We were playing St. Charles, and they were, you know, they're a great team. And these girls were big, and we just fought and fought. There isn't a game that I ever think of more than this game. This game... We just, we just, we fought so hard. Yeah! Who got the foul? Megan Casey would find Christina Furtado streaking to the basket to extend the lead to 24-21. Tie pants was used like in important parts of the game. And I remember in the Staten Island game, um, actually late in the game, uh, Sean called it, and I got the ball, and I just scored. The um, referees over there in Staten Island didn't, didn't they weren't interested in uh, having her foul out, uh, where they were trying to, <laughs> as hard as they could uh, to keep her in the game. Uh, so it seemed like there was some home cooking going on. before the half and to start the third uh, they really wrestled momentum away from us and um, everything was uh, starting to go their way and then at the end someone fouled me and I s scored my two foul shots and I tied the game 
Take it, take it. game when number eight had four fouls uh it seemed like the referee didn't want to give her the fifth foul um there would be fouls uh, where it would be number eight and they would give it to somebody else or she would foul somebody and uh they just wouldn't make that call um it didn't seem like they wanted her to foul out of the game and like it was such an intense game like the score kept going like we were winning they were winning like it just kept going back and forth even though we felt like she should have been fouled out already, she stayed in the game and she kept uh, laying a beating on us. Our girls just, they never stopped fighting. These girls were bigger, stronger, uh, they were a great team. My foul shots got it to a two-point range with a little over a minute left to go. Number 27 missed uh, a chippy uh, opening the door for our girls uh, to uh, tie it up. When they had no choice and they, they, they ended up uh, giving her the fifth foul, I mean, that was huge. Number eight, their um, tallest girl fouled out eventually. And For us now, we just needed to tie the score up because if we could tie the score and send this game to overtime, we liked our chances. Late in that game, I kept going to the foul line and it was really like scary. The girl that replaced the number eight, um, she was kind of slow, but she was very tall, and um, she was overplaying me, so I read it, and I went in for a lap, and I tied the game. Oh, like, guys, Kelly, thanks. I love It was so tense, like, I, I don't know. I feel like a lot of the, like, some of the games, I, like, big games, I just, like, don't remember that much of, like, playing it, because I was just, like, so, like, in it, I was, I don't know, I kind of, like, blurted it out. I was just, like, like, my mom would be, like, did you hear me cheering? I was screaming my head off. I'm, like, no, I didn't hear you. I was just, like, focused on, like, playing. We were just, like, in the moment. And we were able to tie the game. And then once we did that and, and brought it to overtime, we knew it was our game. And then I made two shots. One was off of tight pants in overtime. Once again, tight pants was dialed up. They both followed Kelly to the corner and it was an easy basket. That's one of the games that you just like can't give up. Like, you have to play till the last second, like your heart's out just because it was just so important. Jillian made uh, two nice plays in overtime. One, knocking the ball off the girl's leg, uh, giving us possession, and uh, sending a nice pick for Megan to go right to the basket. And I think that game just taught us that we should like never give up and yeah they didn't know how to they didn't know how to stop us they were getting tired we were we threw everything at them and we fought on we had Megan Bruno fouled out Nicole Sanfilippo fouled out we but the good thing about this team which which makes everybody kicks in everyone steps up uh, you know we had Bench fresh, driving to the net. Uh, they they lost their, their top player to, to fouling out, and uh, the girls that were coming in were, were no nowhere near the caliber of, of our girls.
you know, being a team and, and having the depth and, and wearing, wearing the other guys down. It was insane. That was, by far, I felt, the apex of, um, of that season. Even though we went further and went up to the States after that, just coming back and being able to uh, regain or, or, our respect what we could have won in fourth grade, we actually, these, these girls took all that to heart, I felt, and they played their hearts out, and they won. But this day, David beat Goliath. <laughs> This was the biggest win I can I can ever ever remember. This was my miracle on ice, uh, and I I always loved the girls, still always love the girls, but this day was uh, one I'll never forget in my entire life. Let me guess. I don't feel so gay. Man. Can I get the moms to give me a little? Moms. Get the moms over here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for the moms. Basketball moms. Basketball moms. This is the, uh, this is the Abby League. Abby League. Guys, this is Abby League. Abby League basketball moms right here. <laughs> Do, what do you do? You remember celebrating at Double Days? Yeah, but it's not like I remember anything that happened. Well, it's. It was fun. Put that in there. Couldn't do it. I was. Uh, I was all spent. I. I can honestly say. I couldn't go out that day and because uh, I left it all on the court. I, uh, I had to go home. I, uh, I couldn't stop my body. It was, uh, that day was uh, a little much for me and I needed to, uh, I needed to call it a day. Private Eye uh, investive, uh, investigative uh, company, uh, the Vitato uh, LLC. Yeah, so we were uh, recruited to scout the, the team. Um, that we were going to play in the state finals. When Vinny and I and Sean uh, went to go scout out the, um, the teams that we would play uh, in the final, uh, I, uh, I felt terrible. I, di I didn't know what was going on with me. Uh, I found out after that later on that day that I had shingles. And, uh, and the doctor was asking me, like, well, is there anything uh, stressful going on in your life uh, right now? And uh, I said, well, you know, no, I mean, my, my daughter's team is in the state finals of basketball. And uh, the doctor was like, well, then that, that can't be it. And then I said, well, actually, you don't know me. That's it. St. Stephen's play St. Gregory's. And um, we were writing down a lot of information. And we actually, we thought St. Gregory's was going to be the team we were going to play. And then in the end... Green somehow pulled that out, and uh, we had, you know, just a little information on the green team, but uh, we left there just feeling really confident um, and uh, knew if we just played our game that the championship would be ours. Jen or I filmed every single game from the very beginning, but the only game that we don't have on videotape is the state final game. The downstate game was so much harder than that game, and you would think, like, as you, like, go higher, like, into the round, like, it would get harder. This is the state final. This is it. 
if we lose, we lose, and if we win, we win the whole state. We crushed this team so bad, and I was like, is this real? Are we actually playing this team? And it was it was crazy because I didn't think it would be like this bad that we would win, win by that much. We kind of knew we were going to win because they were pretty bad and stuff, so. Coming into the game, I was so nervous because it's like, oh my god, we're here, like this is going to be a big game. But then during the game, we were sort of winning by a lot because the team wasn't as good as we expected and we were really prepared. So winning that was amazing, like we were all so happy. I know like our parents were happy for us, like we had a huge crowd, like all of Ardsley came and it was so nice having that many people support us and be there when we finally like got our goal. We just... We just came out on fire. They didn't even know what to do with us. Uh, so our passing, our moving the ball, our defense, we came right out of the gate. I, I don't know what we shot, but I'm going to say we shot around 70%, and uh, nobody was going to beat us that day. No one was going to stop these girls from becoming state champions of the fifth grade in CYO. Congratulations, girls. You deserved it. Winning states was probably a memory I will never ever forget. Um, it was amazing. We had so much fun. We all had like matching OPA shirts. Every mom it was so much fun. I remember being like so pumped up. It was great to win, and that's all we needed for that season. It was perfect. Stamp champions of New York State. Um, it doesn't get better than that, uh, except then to. Um, celebrate with them on the court, to take pictures with the parents. And when the team won the state championship, it meant so much to us as a family. And actually, to be the first CYO team of OOPH to win the states. It was amazing to be a part of that. This is it, CYO championship. The girls. Only one person, one, uh, one team walks away with the ball. 27-14. And we just want to be clear. It's not about the girls. <laughs> it's not about the girls. And then all the celebrating that everybody did afterwards at the saloon, um, a night to remember. But again, it's not just about you girls, you know. No, that was unbelievable. What a great win. Uh, I, uh, we, uh, we then went out, uh, we then went out to uh, the saloon up in, uh, up in Pearl River and, um, you would think I just came home from war. Uh, we went out like there was no tomorrow. So after the state championship victory, we went to Sean's restaurant and there was like a nice arcade downstairs and then the cake, we smudged it and put it on our faces and we had these little like cups and we put them in our mouth and our eyes and our ears and it was so fun. One, two, three. Eating with our hands full of cake and smashing it all over people's faces and it was just a night to remember it was crazy <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Casey's were unbelievable hosts and uh, the kids just felt like uh, I think one of the kids said to me are we going to Disney let me see your face. <laughs> Kelly, I never saw you looking so good. <laughs> Sean's restaurant, and we had like this big cake for us, and we just started like taking the, we just took it with our hands and just started throwing it at people. And I remember, I think I was sitting next to her like across Nikki, and I just kept putting it in her face the whole time. Oh, share the wealth, Bruno! Share the wealth, Bruno! I remember I was feeling really good that night. Um, I had a few in me, so did Kathy, I believe. Um, I challenged Kathy to an arm wrestling match, which I think was pretty stupid on my part, but uh, I thought maybe I had a shot. But, uh, yeah, no, she kicked my butt. Come on! Look at the game! Why? Let's go, Linda!
night that they won states was probably like the greatest night. Uh, but I, you know, I, I fought through, but I was not feeling well at all, and uh, it really hampered my celebration uh, on the whole thing. But uh, I'll always remember that moment because uh, I wasn't feeling that great at that time. our flight we were supposed to go away the day before we didn't think we were gonna make it to the state championship so we set up our flight for uh, the next uh, the next morning and uh, let me tell you what a great flight we had we had uh, we got to talk about uh, everything and everything and it was just unbelievable what a great year we won it all state championship fifth grade Ardsley's OLPH. So after we won state champs, eventually we went to the Greenberg office and we went and we got like certificates um, and it was like OLPH day because we won state champs and that was never done before and it was all recorded and yeah, it was great and it was just like we made history. I never really realized how important it was to win a state championship. We all got our names called at Paul Feiner's office, I guess, and it was that was crazy. Like we thought, like we were really like we did something really amazing, and like we got a certificate. We talked to Paul Feiner, and that was just a really cool day. Like I remember like sitting down, waiting, and they called us all up, and we took pictures. It was really cool. One team, one dream. Say champs. <laughs> I just want to tell you both, good luck. We're all counting on you.